Welcome to GetChemistryHealth.com. My name is Dr. Kent, and in this video, we're going to discuss the concept of limiting reactants. Now, if you haven't yet watched our video lesson on stoichiometry, I suggest you check that out first, as that'll be very helpful for this. Now, a limiting reactant problem is a reaction in which you have too much of some reactants and not enough of another reactant. So the best way to probably illustrate this is just by using a simple analogy. So let's say we're going to make cheese sandwiches. We can imagine that our reaction is one slice of cheese reacts with two slices of bread to produce one cheese sandwich. So our stoichiometric ratio is one to two to one. Now again, just as in a chemical reaction, the ratio is particles or pieces. So our particles could be molecules, our particles could be moles, our particles could just be pieces of cheese and bread. So one slice of cheese reacts with two slices of bread to make one cheese sandwich. Well, does that same ratio work for mass? In other words, could I have a one to two to one mass ratio? Could I say for every one pound of cheese, it reacts with two pounds of bread to make one pound of sandwiches? Of course not. The stoichiometric ratio is always pieces or particles, not mass. Okay, so let's say then, for example, we didn't have the exact one to two ratio of reactants. So we have three slices of cheese and eight slices of bread. Okay, well how many cheese sandwiches could we make? Well, for every one slice of cheese, it takes two slices of bread. So I use up one slice of cheese and two slices of bread to make one sandwich. And then I use up another slice of cheese and two more slices of bread, make a second sandwich. Then I use a third slice of cheese and two more slices of bread to make a third sandwich. Okay, so we made three sandwiches. Well, notice we still have some bread left, even though we used up all of the cheese. Okay, so what reactant did we have an excess of? Well, we had more than enough of the bread. So bread is called the excess reactant. Again, the reactant you have more than you need, that's the excess reactant. What reactant did we run out of that limited our sandwich production? Well, our three slices of cheese ran out first, and that limited us to only three sandwiches. So therefore, cheese is called the limiting reactant because the three slices of cheese limited us to only three sandwiches. So the limiting reactant is always the one that's completely consumed or completely used up. And it's called that because, again, it limits how much product we can make. So in our example, the cheese ran out first. So those three slices of cheese limited us to making only three cheese sandwiches. Therefore, cheese was the limiting reactant. Well, let's do an example now with chemistry. So in our reaction here, they say, how many moles of water can we make from six moles of hydrogen and four moles of oxygen? Okay, so if we mix together six moles of hydrogen and four moles of oxygen, how many moles of water can we make? Well, we're just going to do the calculation twice. First, I'm going to take six moles of hydrogen, see how much water that lets me make. Then I'm going to take four moles of oxygen, see how much water that lets me make. So let's just try it out. So six moles of hydrogen. Okay, well, I'm trying to relate moles of hydrogen to moles of water. Well, I see from the stoichiometric ratio that for every two moles of hydrogen, I produce two moles of water. So I'll put two moles of hydrogen on the bottom and two moles of water on the top. Okay, so I can work that out. And that shows me that for every six moles of hydrogen, I can produce six moles of water. Okay, well how about the four moles of oxygen? Well, four moles of oxygen, and I want to relate that to water. So what's the ratio between oxygen and water? Well, for every one mole of oxygen, I can produce two moles of water. So I need moles of oxygen on the bottom. So one mole oxygen, two moles water. So we cross that out. So now that lets me make eight moles of water. Okay, so our question is, well, how much water would we actually make? Would I make six moles of water? Would I make eight moles of water? Or would I perhaps add them together and make 14? Well, we always make whatever was the smallest number. So in our case, we're gonna make six moles of water. 
Again, if you think back to our cheese sandwich analogy, I had enough cheese to make three sandwiches. I had enough bread to make four sandwiches, but I had to make whatever was the smaller amount, which was three. So what was the limiting reactant? Well, the hydrogen here limited me to making only six moles of water. So what was the excess reactant then? Well, there was plenty of oxygen to keep going and make up to eight moles of water. So oxygen is the excess reactant. So again, the six moles of hydrogen limited me to making only six moles of water. But there was enough oxygen to make eight moles of water. So hydrogen was my limiting reactant and oxygen was my excess reactant. But you'll notice though here that even though there was more moles of hydrogen, that was still the limiting reactant. So you can't just look at the initial amount of the reactants, you have to actually solve it in terms of one of the products to see which one actually limits. So even though there was more moles of hydrogen than oxygen, hydrogen still wound up being the limiting reactant, and oxygen, which there was less of, actually wound up being the excess reactant. Okay, well as we saw in our stoichiometry problems, of course we don't normally do reactions with moles, we do them with mass. So let's just try an example here using aluminum and iron three oxide. So this reaction, by the way, is actually called the thermite reaction. It's kind of an interesting reaction in that the reaction gets extremely hot. In fact, it gets so hot that it actually makes liquid or molten iron. This is a reaction they'll actually use on the railroad sometimes because they can take these two powders, mix them together, give them a little spark, and it makes molten iron, which they can use to weld together the steel railroad ties. Okay, so in our reaction, if I have 113 grams of aluminum, and 279 grams of iron three oxide, well how many grams of iron could I make? Okay, well we're gonna turn 113 grams of aluminum into iron, and 279 grams of iron three oxide into iron, and we'll see whichever one produces the least amount, that must be the amount that we actually make. So let's just try this. So 113 grams of aluminum, so I have mass of aluminum, and of course I always need to turn the mass into moles because these coefficients, two to one to one to two, that's the mole ratio. So I turn mass into mole with my old friend molar mass. So I look on my periodic table. And if you don't have a copy handy, you can always go to getchemistryhelp.com and print one out. But the molar mass of aluminum is 26.98 grams per mole of aluminum. So I get rid of my grams of aluminum. Okay, well, I'm trying to relate moles of aluminum into iron, it says. So for every two moles of aluminum, I produce two moles of iron. So moles of aluminum are on top here, so I gotta put moles of aluminum on the bottom in order for it to cancel. So two moles of aluminum produces two moles of iron. Okay, now I'm in moles of iron, but I want the mass of iron, so moles to mass, we use the molar mass. So we find iron on the periodic table and that's 55.85 grams per mole of iron. Okay, so moles of iron cancels. So we can put that in our calculator. Okay, so we have three sig figs, four sig figs. The mole ratio is always exact, and then four sig figs. So my answer must have three. So 113 grams of aluminum lets me produce 234 grams of iron. How about the 279 grams of iron three oxide? Well, we'll do a similar calculation for that. So 279 grams iron three oxide. We're gonna have mass, and I always need to get it into moles to use the stoichiometric ratio here. So we find the molar mass of iron three oxide. So we add up two irons, three oxygens, and I got 159.70 grams. That's the mass of a mole of iron three oxide. Okay, so grams iron three oxide cancels. Now I have moles. Again, I'm trying to relate iron three oxide to iron. So for every one mole of iron three oxide, I produce two moles of iron. So one mole iron three oxide produces two moles of iron. So moles of iron three oxide cancels. Well again, the molar mass is 55.85 grams per one mole of iron. So moles of iron cancels, 
And this again is three sig figs, five sig figs, exact, and four sig figs. So the answer must have three, so 195 grams of iron. Okay, well again, the question is, how much iron do I make? Do I make 234 grams? Do I make 195 grams? Or do I make some combination? Well, we always pick whichever one is the least amount. So in our case, we would make 195 grams of iron. Okay, then which reactant was the limiting reactant? Well, whichever reactant gave me that amount. So in our case, the iron 3 oxide was the one that limited us to only 195 grams of iron. So iron three oxide, this is the limiting reactant, which means aluminum had to be the excess reactant because again, there was enough aluminum to keep going and make 234 grams of iron. So we had more than enough aluminum, but the iron three oxide is what ran out and limited us to only 195 grams. Let's try one more example. Well, this reaction is actually one that's used in the formation of synthetic fibers. In the case here, we have C3H6, and that's actually called propylene. And that reacts with nitrogen monoxide to make C3H3N, which has the name acrylonitrile. And acrylonitrile is one of the precursors to making acrylics, which again is a kind of a synthetic fiber. So you may have seen acrylic sweaters, for example. Okay, well in our reaction, we have 21.6 grams of propylene and 21.6 grams of nitrogen monoxide. So it wants to know what mass or how many grams of acrylonitrile can we make? We're gonna do the same thing as in the last example. We're gonna turn 21.6 grams propylene into grams of acrylonitrile and 21.6 grams nitrogen monoxide into grams of acrylonitrile. Whichever one gives us the least amount, well, that reactant's the limiting reactant. And that mass of acrylonitrile is the actual mass that we could make. So let's just go ahead and try this. So 21.6 grams propylene C3H6. Well, again, I have mass of propylene. My stoichiometric ratio is always in moles, so I got to turn this into moles. So I add up three carbons, six hydrogens, and I got 42.09 grams per mole of propylene. So now I'm in moles of propylene, but I'm trying to relate that to acrylonitrile. So we see for every four moles of propylene, I produce four moles of acrylonitrile. So we'll put that into my mole ratio here. Four moles propylene for every four moles acrylonitrile. Now I'm in moles of acrylonitrile, but again, I want to know the mass in grams, it says. So we find the molar mass of that. So we add up three carbons, three hydrogens, and a nitrogen. And I did that, and I got 53.07 grams is the mass of a mole of acrylonitrile. Okay, so three significant digits, four significant digits, exact, and four so our answer needs three, so I got 27.7 .7 grams of acrylonitrile for this one. Well, now we just do it again, but with 21.6 grams of nitrogen monoxide. So 21.6 grams nitrogen monoxide. So we find the molar mass of that, add up a nitrogen and an oxygen, and you'll get 30.01 grams per mole of NO. So mass of NO cancels. Now I have moles of NO, but I want to relate nitrogen monoxide to acrylonitrile. So I look up here and I find my ratio. And for every six moles of nitrogen monoxide, I make four moles of acrylonitrile. So six moles nitrogen monoxide lets me make four moles of acrylonitrile. So now I have moles of acrylonitrile but again, I want mass, so we use the molar mass one more time. So 53.07 grams is the mass of a mole of C3H3N. So moles cancels. Again, we're gonna have three significant digits in our answer. 
So I got 25.5 grams of C3H3N. Okay, so again, what mass of acrylonitrile do we actually make? Well, we always pick the smallest one. So in our case, we would only make 25.5 grams of acrylonitrile. So which reactant was the limiting reactant? Well, the reactant that gave me this mass was NO. So nitrogen monoxide, that would be the limiting reactant. Because that one runs out first and limits me to only making a max of 25.5 grams. Okay, so which reactant was the excess reactant? Well, we had enough propylene to keep going and make another 2.2 grams up to 27.7. .7. So propylene was my excess reactant. Well, hope you enjoyed this lesson on limiting reactant problems. As always, leave me a comment down below to let me know what you thought. And be sure and click on that subscribe button so you can be notified as soon as new videos are posted. And we will see you back here next time at GetChemistryHelp.com. Thank you.